Hello, this is Ms. DB, and in this video we're going to go over how to solve problems with powers of 10 and scientific notation. And this is from 7.2 worksheet in the section 2 in your chapter 7 books. So powers of 10 can be used to read and write very large and very small numbers. Scientists often write numbers in scientific notation and learning scientific notation is just a matter of multiplying or dividing by 10. So we're going to be just working with powers of 10. Now to do that, we'll have to use some negative exponents and we'll use decimals as well. Let's look at kind of an overview of what we're going to go over. So powers of 10 can have positive exponents or negative exponents. Let's look at the positive side. If they are a positive exponent, the decimal point will move to the right. For example, 10 to the 8th, we start with a 1, we write down 1 first, and then there, there's an imaginary decimal after the 1, and then you have to move it 1, 2, I can't move my pen in that small of motions, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Each of those little bumps that I made have to be filled in with zeros. So that's 10 to the 8th, you move to the right. If you are writing your number in scientific notation, you always want one digit and then the decimal point. So that's a specific thing for powers of 10 written in scientific notation is you look at there's always going to be one digit and then the decimal point. One digit and then the decimal point. Um, here's another example where we are starting with 32.6 times 10 to the fifth. And the directions would probably say, you know, what is the value of this? So we write down the 32.6. Let me show you how I'd write that. 32.6. And then the exponent is 5. So that tells you to move 5 places right. So I start at the decimal point, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I stop. And then I fill in each of these bumps that doesn't already have a number with zeros. And then the answer, of course, you count backwards to find your commas. There's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So 3 million, 260,000. There's no decimal in your answer. If you want, you can put a decimal point at the end, but there's no one, none anywhere else. Okay, let's look at some negative exponent problems. If you have a negative exponent, you'll move your decimal point to the left. For example, 10 to the negative 6. You start by writing a 1. Remember that when you write a 1, there's an imaginary decimal point after it. And then I have to move 6 places to the left. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you put another decimal point. You put your decimal point at the beginning because it matters when it's at the beginning. And then you fill in all your bumps with zeros. So we have point zero 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 one. So you do not just automatically look at the digit on the exponent and add zeros to the front or the back. That's not how you do it. You have to move the decimal point that many times and then fill in with zeros as needed. Here's an example where we are changing 4.09 times 10 to the negative third into a decimal form. So you start by writing down the 4.09 and I have to move three places because the negative three tells me to go to the left. One, two, three. Put your decimal point, fill in with zeros. Now, you can put a zero in front of the decimal if you want. You don't have to. That zero does not count in our movement of our decimal point. Again, scientific notation, and we'll talk more about this, but that is when you leave your answer as one digit, then the decimal, and then any other non-zero digits after that, and then it'll always be times 10 to the sum power. Little numbers will have a negative exponent. Big numbers will have a positive exponent. Okay, so here's just a couple more examples. If you are asked to find the value of 10 to the fifth, it's going through exactly what we just did and also how to find the value of 10 to the negative fourth. So remember that if you are, if you have a positive exponent, you move to the right. You write down the one and then you move one, two. <laughs> I lost my count of my my space one two three four five and you fill in with zeros if you are writing as a power of 10 here's the number 100 million then let's count how many places would there be to get to the 10 
if you want to write this as a power of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you go all the way from the 0 to the 1 at the end. That's 8 places, so that's 10 to the 8th. Remember that numbers greater than 1 will have a positive exponent. Now if we have a negative exponent, then we, move, we have a negative exponent, you move to the left. So you start by writing down your 1, and then you move 1, 2, 3, 4, because it was times 10 in the negative 4th, and then you put your decimal in front. If we have to write a number that is a decimal as a power of 10, we again count the places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we moved 5 bumps, 5 places, so that and it's a tiny number, so the exponent would be negative 5, so 10 to the negative 5. Numbers less than 1 will have a negative exponent. All right, so on your worksheet, you have to answer some questions about these powers of 10. So you're going to decide whether you're going to move right or left and then find the value of what it would be in standard form. So 10 to the 6, it, that's a positive exponent. So then we will move, we'll write our 1, and we'll move to the 1, 2, 3, you'll move to the right. So positive exponents move to the right, and negative exponents move to the left. And then to find the value of 10 to the 6, I'll finish up what I was working on here. So I was going to go 6 places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to, whoa, I need to put a 0 in each of my bumps there. I was trying to erase this, but it wouldn't erase for me. Here we go. All right, let's try this again. Adding my zeros in, I need a zero here, 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 here. So counting backwards to get my groups of three, I'd have there and there. So this would be one million for my value of 10 to the sixth. Let's look at number four. This is a negative exponent, so I'll move to the left. So you can highlight or circle the word left, or you can rewrite it. And the value, to find this, I put my 1 down, and this time I have to move to the left. Remember, the decimal is after the 1, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put your decimal, fill in your bumps that don't have a number with 0. So point zero 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 one is the value of 10 to the negative fifth. All right, in this one, we are going to take our number that's in standard form and change it to a power of 10. So first, let's figure out if this is going to have a positive or negative number, and then we'll write our powers of 10. So in the first one, this is a big number. So the exponent will be positive. If it's less than 1, like number 6, it will be negative. Now we have to write it as a power of 10. It'll be t I put question mark there, but it'll be 10 to the something. Let's find out. You can rewrite the 1,000, or you can just put your decimal point at the back and figure out how many places do I have to go to get all the way to the 1. So I'd have 1, 2, 3. So you would write this as 10 to the 3rd. 10 to the 3rd. You can use the key um, that is shift 6 and write 10 to the 3rd this way as well. Number 6 has a negative exponent, and I have to count what I need for my exponent. So this would be start at the decimal point and move to after the 1. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4, but it's not just 4, it's negative 4. So 10 to the negative 4th, because remember we are going to have a negative exponent because this was a little number. My 4 doesn't want to stay. There we go. All right, now some scientific notation review. You've probably done this before in science class or in a different math class. The first factor must be between 1 and 10. One digit, decimal point, any other digits. Never will this be 32, 107, anything bigger than 10. It has to be one digit only. And the second factor must be a power of 10. This is one of the few times in algebra when we write our time sign as an X. 
just standard notation to use an X for the time sign when you're using standard when you're using scientific notation. So here's how we do it. It's very similar to the powers of 10, except instead of writing 1, we write all of our digits that are non-zeros up until we hit 0. So we have a 7, a 2, and a 3, and then the rest is 0. So I just need the 7, the 2, and the 3. And it's always going to be one digit and then the decimal. So I start by writing 7 and then 0.23. Now I need to figure out if this is my decimal point, how many places is there from here to here? So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 9 places. So this is 7.23 times 10. That's my exponent, how many places I moved my decimal. 9 places. Okay, let's look at an example with a little one, 0. 0.00062. So first we write the 6.2. It's always going to have one digit and then the decimal. And then I have to figure out what will be the exponent on my power of 10. So here's my decimal point. I have to move it all the way to right here, 6.2. So I'm going to count how many times I have to move it from here to here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So then I know that my exponent is negative 4 because this was a little number, so it's going to have a negative exponent. All right, let's look at, oh, we'll look at some more with standard form in a minute. So here's your problems from your worksheet. Each of these is either going to be positive or negative exponents. If it's greater than 1, if it's a big number, it'll be a positive exponent. If it's a little number, it'll be a negative exponent. So a decimal number is going to have a negative exponent. That helps you remember. Now here we need to write this in scientific notation. First of all, I know it's going to be 6.12. It can't be 61.2 because that is not in scientific notation. Number 10 is going to be 4.5 because it has to be that way. Number 11 will be 4.67. And number 12 will just be 5, and 13 will be 5.1. Now I have to figure out times 10 to the what exponent, what power will my 10 be? To figure that out, take your decimal point where it is now, which is right here at the, at the back, and I have to move it all the way to where I want it to be, which I already said would be right after the 6. So I have to count how many places do I need to move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7. So that means that this would be 6.12 times 10 to the 7th. In the next one, with a little number, less than 1, I want my decimal to be, end up right here between the 4 and the 5. I already wrote that it'll be 4.5, so I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I start at where the decimal was, and I moved it over 4 places, and it's a little number, so it's going to have a negative exponent. I already wrote that. So it's 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now sometimes we'll be given a number in scientific notation and we have to write it in standard form. So here's how you would do that. First write the number 7.451. You can leave the decimal point where it was. Now I'm going to change that by counting how many places? It was 10 to the third. I need to move that decimal point three places. This is going to be a big number because it has a positive exponent. So I know that I have to move to the right because otherwise I'd be getting a little decimal number. So I go 1, 2, 3. So this number in standard form doesn't even get to add any zeros. It's just 7,451. Now, if I have a negative exponent like 1.5, I know that's going to end up being a little number with zeros in front, a decimal number. So I write the 1.5 down, and then I look at the exponent, and it's negative 4. So I start at my original decimal point, and I move 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I fill in the bumps with zeros, just like we looked at before. So this answer would be 0.00015. Now, I would not recommend doing these without actually drawing the little bumps to show how many places you're moving. They're showing that in their examples. I'm showing it with a pen. Do it. Do it on notebook paper or um, figure out a way to do it in 
word if you want. That would be challenging. But you need to actually move, or if you're just guessing at how many zeros to add to the front or the back, you're, it's going to be likely that you'll make a mistake, especially when the numbers get really big, like 8 or 12 or big numbers like that. Okay, this is just a few problems at the end of your worksheet to review. You have to say which one is a large number, 4 times 10 to the 9th, or 4 times 10 to the negative 9th. And then number 19 through 22 are matching the powers of 10 with their standard form numbers. So you have to be careful and pick, like, you should know which ones are the positive ones, but you have to be careful about the numbers of zeros that they're adding, you know, before the number or after the number one. All right, so good luck. Let me know if you have any questions and have a wonderful day.